is a real life German U boat. In 1893, the city of Chicago was the host of the World's Columbian Exposition. And during this period of time, you know, with these expositions and world fairs, these would last for months. And then uh, after they were done, everything would get torn down. Well, I happen to be at the only surviving structure of the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition. Uh, this was the Palace of Fine Arts. Uh, but today, it is the largest science museum in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, this is the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, Illinois. And uh, to be honest, there is one reason why I am here. There's a bunch of cool things here, but the one reason that I'm here is to see a German U-boat that was captured during World War II called the U-505. Uh, so anyway, we're getting ready to go inside and uh, check it out and see what they got. So uh, prior to getting into the U-505 itself, they have all kinds of interesting things that, uh, that were taken off the U-505, like this pennant. So the uh, different U-boats would fly pennants that signified how many tons of Allied shipping material they had sunk. Kind of interesting. Here's a uh, life vest that uh, was made with uh, fibers from a, a kapok tree, is what it says. I think I pronounced that right. Anyway, they would stuff those fibers inside these uh, different uh, sections of the life vest and that would make it buoyant. Okay, now this is really cool. This is the cruise book from the U-505. This is uh, something that kept records of the U.S. merchant ships or allied merchant ships that were sunk by the U-boat. Also has pictures. That is very cool. And then uh, here's another scrapbook from the U-505. Planner and a sextant. You can see this one has German markings on it from the Nazi era. And uh, some wrenches that were pulled off of it. Those are that's serious business there. Very cool. Hey, so this is kind of cool. Uh, it's the Captain America and the Human Torch and the Submariner capturing a U-boat. It's pretty neat that they included this. Okay, so here's a German Navy leather uniform that uh, Kriegsmarine sailors would have had. And uh, this is an American uniform from a guy that was part of the USS Pillsbury. This was uh, one of the boarding party that captured the U-505. Okay, so in, uh, in World War II, there is a lot of attention that gets put on the battle in the Pacific and also the battle in Europe. But another theater that, that really gets overlooked that was pivotal in the war is the battle for the Atlantic. Uh, so early on, there were U-boats that were just prowling the waters of the Atlantic Ocean and sinking literally hundreds of thousands of tons of Allied shipping. Um, so during the war, one of these U-boats ended up getting captured, called the U-505. So we're getting ready to go into this exhibit, learn a little bit more about the U-boats and about the battle for the Atlantic. Pretty pumped about this. So the narration on the video behind me is a little bit loud, but I'll do the best I can here. Uh, this shows just the vast amount 
of ships that were sunk by U-boats in the Atlantic during the war. So 1941, kind of a bad year, 432 that were hit. This was whenever the U.S. was providing uh, supplies via the Lend-Lease Act. But look at 1942, 1,150 merchant ships sunk by U-boats. So these things were just horrifying. And you can see by 43, 44, and then especially 45, that, that really started to tail off. All right, so this is Captain Dan Gallery. Uh, this is the guy who was in charge of the task force that uh, ended up capturing one of these U-boats. I'm reading his book right now. It's pretty fascinating. Interesting. Okay, so I uh, just got done watching a few films about the U-505 and the task group that uh, captured the U-boat. Came around the corner and boom, there it is. The U-505, a real life German submarine. Uh, and this thing is huge. The guy just told me it weighs three times what the Statue of Liberty weighs. So we're gonna go down, take a little closer look and, uh, and go inside it actually. Uh, pretty pumped about this. Okay, so this is something kind of interesting that I've never seen before. These are Mark 9 depth charges and Mark 4 hedgehogs that the U.S. Navy would use to try and sink or bring to the surface these U-boats. So this is the depth charge right here, and it'd be fired off uh, really kind of like a mortar, and they would fire them in clusters, and they were pressure activated. So once they got to a predetermined depth, like 30 to 600 feet below the surface, they would explode. And then this is the hedgehog right here. Same concept. They would get launched in a salvo or like a cluster of 24 at a time. And uh, yeah, would also go off at a predetermined depth to try and take down these U-boats. Very interesting. So this is the nine man boarding party that uh, went aboard the U-505 and the leader of it, a uh, lieutenant by the name of Albert David, to my knowledge is the only guy who won the Medal of Honor uh, in the Navy in the Atlantic Theater. Cool. We're getting ready to go down and get inside this big hulk, but uh, one thing I did want to mention is that a lot of people don't realize that the submarines of World War II were primarily a surface level ship. They would only dive, you know, under necessity. So this really spent most of its time uh, above water. So this is the Coning Tower, and uh, you can see it's outfitted with, with some guns and with some weaponry. But uh, what's kind of neat is right here, you can see some of the bullet holes from where the aircraft of the U.S. hit it with some 50 caliber rounds. Pretty cool. Looking forward to going inside this thing. Okay, so um, that was really cool. Just got out of the U-boat. Uh, unfortunately, right before I went in, found out that you can't take any video inside of the U-boat. So I wanted to, you know, respect their wishes. Uh, but I did take some pictures, which is allowed. And uh, yeah, thought that that would be better than nothing. So here's a few pictures from inside of the U-boat. the coast of Africa is where the U-505 was captured. Pretty amazing. And then hauled all the way across to our side of the ocean. Ah, uh, check this out. Got a couple of German Enigma machines. This was the coding machine that was used by the Germans that gave the Allies so many problems during the war because it was considered to be unbreakable. And uh, Allies ended up breaking the code. If you watch the movie The Imitation Game with Benedict Cumberbatch, it talks about the process of decoding this machine. 
Very cool that they have a couple of these here. This display right here is talking about the ballast tanks. Uh, so the way that a submarine works, or at least a German submarine during World War II, is uh, you have these tanks on the outside that uh, can be filled with air or water. So you fill them with water, that makes you go down, fill them with air, makes you go up. So we're going to see how we do here. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and start. And I have to achieve neutral buoyancy. So it looks like I need, like I need to go around three to 400 feet. So here we go. Uh, we need to go down. And whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, back up, back up. Oh gosh, I just killed us all. All right, so this is actually kind of cool. On November 11th of 1942, uh, there was a British seaplane that attacked the U-505 and did some damage to it, but it ended up crashing because it flew in too low. And this little hatchet-shaped hat badge was something that the crew of the U-505 made from the wing of that seaplane. It's kind of like a, a little trophy or something. Very, very interesting. All right, so this is a German practice torpedo. Um, pretty interesting. A lot of people have the misconception that this little piece right here, this little propeller on the end, has something to do with the propulsion through water. So the propulsion comes from the back. Uh, that little piece right there would spin around in the water and as it spun it would turn a screw and that's what would arm the torpedo. So you don't want the torpedo arm whenever you're putting it on the sub because that could be dangerous if it gets jostled around. So that little spinner right there is the arming device. So this is kind of funny. You might be wondering what this is. This is a can of bread dough <laughs> and it was discovered in the bilges of the U-505 in 1995. So, years after this thing was captured, they were still finding stuff. That's funny. Alright, so we're down here at the base of the U-505 towards the front, and man, whenever you get down here, you really get an appreciation for how big this thing is. Stands three stories tall, would hold a crew of 60 men in some pretty tightly confined areas um, and then whenever it was surfaced it would run on a diesel engine but they couldn't do that underwater so whenever it would submerge it would run on battery power pretty amazing I still can't get over the fact that I'm standing next to one of these things and here is the war flag for the U-505 gosh so interesting all the things that they they got off of this U-boat Okay, well that was the U-505. Pretty darn amazing. Uh, for anybody that's a fan of history, especially World War II history, Museum of Science and Industry is a must stop because you're not gonna see this anywhere else. Um, not only the, the U-boat itself, but all of the artifacts. Very, very interesting. Um, there's a lot here. We're still going to tour through. Uh, I think there is an exhibit on some space history stuff that we're going to check out. That'll probably come in the next video. But very glad that we stopped here. Learned a lot today. Very, very interesting.